welcome to everyone out there tuning in on this one hour of adventure. My name is Jens Folk and I'm your host for roughly the next hour. And I do have the absolute privilege to welcome on my side Lissy Daignan, a former world champion herself, winner of the first ever edition of a women's Perry Roubaix. So Lissy, you're not only a teammate, you're a friend of Ellen. What can we expect today? Well, I think we're lucky enough, I hope, to be able to witness a history being made, a record being broken. I think Ellen's in fantastic shape. She's had fantastic preparation, a great team behind her. And um, yeah, I think we're all set to see a magnificent performance. I totally agree to that. We see her here on the screen, uh, last minutes or seconds, uh, so to speak, of a warming up. What do you think? What is she doing now? Just raising the body temperature, warming up the muscles, stretching. You don't want to do too much at this moment, don't you? No, as you can see, she's all kitted up. She's already in a race suit, a race helmet. She's absolutely ready to go. It's not about warming up anymore. It's just about the mental focus and not getting stiff, really. So let's see what the hour record actually is. We have an expert explaining it to us. Please watch this clip coming up now. The hour record is not a race against someone else. The hour record is Ellen trying to do as many meters as she possibly can in one hour. For this hour record, she will try to stay as much as she can on this black line here. Because on this black line, the velodrome is exactly 250 meters long. So to break the world record, she will need to cover almost 200 laps. A lot of elements go into this. We've got the clothing, the bike, the training regime, and the science about the conditions in this velodrome. We'll find out more about that later. So, there's your explanation. What is the hour record? Lizzie, I think um, Ellen got some support here from Holland. You <laughs> know that there's some of her family is there, friends are here. W Absolutely. What do we know about that? Yeah, I mean, you, you always know when the Dutch are here, there's plenty of orange in the crowd, there's plenty of atmosphere. Uh, we've got a really um, brilliant uh, set of circumstances. There's a storm brewing outside, which I'm told makes the record attempt even more likely. So the atmosphere is really building and it's an exciting place to, exciting thing to be a part of, really. And we got people here as well, so it's a free entrance. So we got uh, people from Grenchert, from Switzerland. We got the family of Ellen there. You can see in the center of the picture, we just saw them with the Dutch colored uh, helmet. That is a Jos Loden. She did set the old, oh, the actual record at 48.405 kilometers an hour, which is a pretty fast speed, I have to admit. Um, yeah, it takes a special kind of athlete to, to record um, a record like this. And obviously this track is exceptionally fast. That's, this is also where Joss broke the world record. So um, we're hoping to see Ellen do the same. And um, I think we'll hear soon from Ellen about why she has tried to attempt this. It's not something that every athlete is capable of doing physically, but also mentally. It takes a special uh, kind of person to even want to attempt it, really. It does, because it is a really hard hour. I can tell from experience, I tried that eight years ago and I still remember it. So we just saw some technical bits about uh, the track, seven meters, seven wide and uh, 250 meters long, spruce wood, Ellen at her last uh, uh, moments of uh, warming up and getting yeah. ready for this event. Yeah, it's interesting that she actually chose to warm up away from the center of the track just to maintain as much focus as she could. Um, away from the infield. She's obviously up here now, ready to go, but um, it's really important that she mentally stays as focused as possible. Oh, yeah. So let's see what Ellen has to say about it herself, in her own words, about this hour attempt, about this hour record and all the work that went into it. So please listen to, to Ellen. Me, the hour record has been uh, for very long on my wish list already. It's the purest thing you can do. I always say, I'm going to do it one time, but now the time is here. In a normal time trial, you have a course where there's corners, where there's uh, some uh, uphill, some descents. Here you start, you have the time, and you know that once you're started, you have a 59 point something minutes. The exact same view, nothing is changing. It's just me and my thoughts. I do have my coach, Jozu, who will give me some feedback, but 
I have to be realistic. I can't keep the same focus for one hour. It's impossible. So there will be moments where I lose it a little more, where I might go off the line a little bit. But in general, I just have to get back to the same things, which is hold the line, keep my position, try to relax as much as possible in the breathing. It's, it's these three things that I really need to, need to focus on. Yeah, I know there will be hard time during the hour and then uh, my strategy is to think about all the people that are close to me and all the people that are involved in this project and to think what, about what everybody does for me. And this is a big motivation also uh, to make it happen. Wow, it's clear from that that this is really Ellen's dream. Uh, I have huge admiration for her that she's the one chasing this dream. It's her initiative. It's not been asked by her. You know, Trek haven't asked her to do this. She's putting herself out there and saying, I want to break this world record. Here we go. So we have 30 seconds left for Ellen to try this. She's probably going to take a last deep breath, focus, go through the battle plan one more time, start fast, don't overdo it, pace yourself and just look at a beautiful bike. I like the idea with the clock on, the disc wheels, you know, shoe cover, skin suit, everything is set up to the point. This is her day, her moment right now. And she goes up to speed quite nicely, smooth acceleration, don't overcook it in the first lap. It's easy to be too excited to go out full gas from the gun. And look, she is just already a little bit ahead of the schedule, so it's a very good start. Now it's about keeping the speed, going up to the speed she wants to hold it for an hour. Let's check the position. I believe she worked really hard on her position and it's super streamlined aerodynamically. She doesn't even look up. No, she has a, quite a unique position actually that she's chosen um, to look down for, throughout the attempt. Um, they've made that decision that actually it's almost 600 meters faster for her to hold that head position. Um, obviously, you know, that's only doable on the velodrome rather than the road, but um, it means potentially feedback from her coach might be a little bit more difficult. Um, and obviously when you look up, there is potential to wobble. Um, but I think she just realized she knows her efforts so well that uh, at least for now, she doesn't need to get feedback from the coach. Yeah, I believe first five minutes is just to get a good start, to get, you know, into it, yeah. into it and yeah, just find your rhythm control your breathing and yeah just make sure your head stays low and it's I don't also about absorbing that start because it does take quite a lot out of your legs um, to make a, a start on a gear like that um, and you're just hoping i think uh, personally i find you know i know pretty soon if i'm on a good day or a bad day and probably she's trying to block out any of those emotions already right if you're a top athlete in prime shape you got a pretty good connection to your body. It basically takes you 30 or 40 seconds you, and you know, this is the day or, oh, ouch, this maybe <laughs> might be not so easy today. But she is turning the wheels pretty smoothly. She keeps her position. She is showing great discipline in her speeding, in her effort. So that, it does look really good. For the tech geeks out there, she is using 170 crank lengths and 5814. Yes, my friends, that is a massive gear. That translates into 108.88 inches. So that is a massive gear. Yeah, and it's a, a balancing act choosing the right gear because um, Ellen's not somebody who is going to be too comfortable in a really high cadence. Different athletes that obviously prefer different cadence, but I think Ellen has chosen to run hopefully between 90 and 100 um, RPM. And the problem is if you're riding a big gear and that slips away from you, keeping momentum on top of a huge gear like that is difficult. Um, but obviously she's done the training, she's done the practice and knows what she's capable of pushing. And she's still perfectly on track with her own schedule. Um, I believe we aim, or oh, just remember, the current record is 48.405. I think Ellen aims they refuse to tell us exactly, <laughs> but we strongly believe she aims at plus 49. So yeah. at least two more laps 
or 500 meters more than the old record. That's, I think, where we're aiming at. You can see at the bottom or right, she is three and a half seconds ahead. So it's all looking good for the moment. 11 laps done. Wow, that went fast. Yeah, impressive. She looks extremely comfortable, extremely smooth, holding that black line really well. Um, I haven't seen her look up too much. I think she's holding that head position really well. Um, she's clearly getting enough feedback from her coach, Yosu, on the back straight where there isn't any crowd noise to be able to hear where she is on her schedule. The coach told me uh, yesterday they are aiming at something like 18.1 or 18.2 seconds per lap. Currently she's going a little faster. Of course, she trained more than a month for this. She is just ready and just wants to let it all out. But there's always a risk of being too excited at the beginning and then you pay the price in the last 10 minutes. The moment she looks really good, really smooth. So it's all going according to the plan. The key is not to panic if you do see that you're below the schedule or above it. Um, you can't react too quickly. You need to adjust very slightly. Um, otherwise, it, you definitely pay the price for that. The next time split will be at four kilometers, more or less like a four kilometer individual pursuit. And uh, she is at 47.9 kilometers an hour, passes through at five minutes. Remember, it was a standing start with zero speed. So she will need a few laps to bring the average up to the desired mark. Yeah, and we can see from her position here again, she's still maintaining that low head position. Uh, we've been told that her position isn't actually that different to the, the TT position she used to become world champion. Uh, the key difference is that head position where she's just not needing to see what's in front of her. Yeah, according to the scientists, we uh, do save, let me see through my notes. We do save with the position she is having now, plus the equipment, the skin suit and a helmet. Up to 600 meters, she gets with the same power output. She goes up to 600 meters further with that new position in combination with the bike and the TT helmet. So that's quite not a marginal gain anymore. That's a massive gain. That's three laps almost. There's, a, there's another stat that at the speed that Ellen is traveling, she actually kind of creates her own crosswind within the track. Um, and there's this idea that she should hold a certain position with her jaw. <laughs> um, so she's, she's practiced that and will be accommodating to the fact that there is a circulating wind produced by herself in the velodrome. It's just incredible how much each individual uh, marginal gain essentially will affect the overall result. So let's see, we talked a little bit about, about marginal gains, technology, what goes into it. Let's know or let's learn everything about the bike she is using. Watch this clip. So Trek, they designed a complete uh, new bike for this hour record attempt. Yeah, which already is very special. They have to design this only for me. The bike looks similar to my normal speed concept, but it has no brakes, it has no shifting. It's a very clean and simple bike. On top of that, uh, I think the painting is amazing. It's really cool. They made this design for me. And I really love it. And uh, every time I see this bike, I'm like, wow, this is so cool. This is my bike for this hour. Yeah. So they asked me if I had some words that I would like to, uh, to have on my bike. I hold the line. This comes from a song. I listen to it sometimes just to get into the mood for it. Keep going always. Like, don't give up. Don't uh, go left or right. Hold your line. and. Keep your goal inside. Yeah, that's why uh, it has this uh, this special meaning to me. So now we know more about her bike, and as you probably already noticed, it is a beautiful blue on this side, and when she comes around the track, it's a wonderful white on the other side. So split color because every split second counts. The bike is a special paint job, of course, for her, and it has a, it has a little message on her head stem. One of her favorite songs, Hold the Line. So she thought it would be very fitting to have it on her bike. She likes the song, and this is all about holding that black line 
the shortest possible way around the track. Yeah, bike uh, position obviously is hugely important. Um, they do say that her clothing um, and the way it fits is probably the most important uh, aspect of her aerodynamics, but obviously the bike is hugely important. Um, and as a specialist like Ellen, she spent months and months um, pouring her heart and soul into getting as fast as she possibly can because it makes all the difference at this level, particularly on you know in the time trials as well, but um, essential here at the Alba Record. So as you see at the bottom corner, she is currently at 48.8 kilometers an hour. She is at record speed. Everything for the moment is perfectly going according to the plan. A little bit more tech talk. We talked about the 58-14 gear ratio. Crank arms, 170. Tire pressure, they keep a big secret about it. But we strongly believe it is between 7.5 and 8.5 and and bar which translates into 110 to 125 PSI. What else do we know about it? Uh, well, she's also using Pirelli tires like we do on Trexec Fredo on the road. Um, and as well, a Santini uh, specially designed suit. They've put in quite a lot of work to making um, a new suit for Ellen, which will uh, be used on the road as well. Um, but I think um, it's made a huge difference to her aerodynamics. Um, she's not wearing gloves, we can see, uh, which some people have been surprised by, but actually after testing they realised that it didn't make a difference and she was more comfortable not wearing the gloves. So that's the kind of always the balance, finding what the rider feels comfortable with, whereas what is fastest. And the, I guess the hour record is all about being uncomfortable. Um, so, you know, she... And right now on screen, that's her family. That's her friends and family coming down here from Holland to support, of course, support her and hopefully be proud after one hour that Ellen hopefully is the new record holder. Yeah, her family travel all over the world. You see them at lots of different world championships. She's got an incredibly supportive family. Ellen doesn't wear gloves, but she does wear shoe covers. And if we get a close up, there are two different materials. A really smooth surface on the shoe because the shoe, the shape already is relatively aerodynamic. So you want a smooth surface on something that's already aerodynamically shaped. The legs, obviously more round because it's legs. So you want to have a little rougher surface there. So that creates a different streaming of the airflow. And that's why we have two different materials in the shoe covers. Yeah, in terms of the, the airflow and the air pressure, we have been told that um, today has, is, is brilliant uh, environmental uh, circumstances. There is this storm brewing outside. Um, it's been very hot and humid all week, which has been difficult for Ellen to train in, but there's been this promise of this storm today. Uh, the temperature is 28 degrees. The barometric pressure is at the low for today. 1,005 millibars, if that means anything to anybody. Um, but these things make a huge difference, and we've been told that the perfect air temperature, or air pressure, sorry, can actually be up to 300 meters difference. Um, so there's a lot of outside factors, although it is this pure event and all about the athlete and their performance, there are still things outside their control which do affect the end result. And quickly back to Ellen, see at the bottom line, at this speed now, she is holding, she's having record speed and she is 17.8 seconds ahead. In other words, an entire lap, she's already ahead of the schedule. An entire lap, because currently she is uh, having lap times of 18 seconds or just a little underneath. So now she's more than a lap ahead of her schedule. It's all really going according to plan. And this hour record has been planned. <laughs> For months and months, for years and years, Ellen has stated, you know, that she's been had this on her bucket list for a very long time. Um, and it's, it's an, like I said before, I'm hugely uh, in admiration for her for going out there and, and asking for the support of Trek Segafredo, which they have given her um, in the middle of a road season. You know, it's no, it's no small ask, and she's committed the last month of training specifically for the hour record. But there's been, you know, years of uh, aerodynamic testing. Um, and preparation gone into this. She has been to the wind tunnel already as early as this January. You went to wind tunnel and did some feasibility tests. 
to see if aerodynamics, if power output, speed, if it all matches and it does make sense to continue with the project, our record. And the numbers were all good, so we went deeper and deeper into it. We will later talk more about aerodynamics and her uh, skin suit. But in a moment, look at her go. It looks very smooth. It's a huge gear, but she is on top of it. Ellen's a real specialist, and she's often said that time trialing is her passion. Um, and she absolutely gets involved with every aspect of her bike position, of all the development. She's, she's desperate to know why and what's improved, whereas other athletes are more comfortable to kind of trust their experts around them. Ellen has always been the kind of athlete that pushes for more. Um, and you can see it in her performances. She is always optimizing everything she can. There's her coach, Yosu. He looks comfortable. Um, he obviously knows a lot more information than we do, but I think everything seems to be going on track. So now that we got the coach in our eyesight, let's hear about him and his approach and the training she went through and how they organized today. Let's see what Yoshio, the coach, has to say. I think uh, that our record is maximal effort because you are facing the unknown. It's not like a one hour TT that we are used to in the road racing. This winter we start talking serious about it, then we start all the testing process. You will think that you could deliver all your power for one hour, but then you realize that not. You have to find that best balance between power and technique, keeping the position, keeping the line. Pain comes everywhere in a different way, not like in the road cycling, because you are always turning in the same directions. For me, it's great to work with him. He's a great coach and, and he thinks of every detail. We really do it together. Yesterday, we did a test and he would give me feedback with a whistle if I have to speed up or slow down. But once I was doing my maximum effort, like, yeah, you want me to go faster, but I can't go faster, you know? You go ride your bike yourself. She used some funny words <laughs> to say, stop with the whistle. So we figured out the whistle is out now. I don't like the whistle anymore. Yeah, actually that was nice because this is something we, we will change. Things that you can only discover when you test in a real situation. I'm smiling because uh, that really represents what kind of relationship Ellen and Yosu have. Um, it's not easy to find a coach that you have a click with and a, a coach that brings out the best in you all the time. But uh, Ellen and Yosu are really an incredible team. Uh, she has so much contact with Yosu. I'm often Ellen's roommate and there isn't a day goes by where there isn't contact and feedback. And Ellen is the kind of rider that loves a lot of feedback. Uh, she likes, like I say, she likes to know a lot of information. She likes to analyze things. And Yosu is, is the perfect coach for her for that. So now at the middle of the screen on the top, lap 54, the old record would translate, or the existing record, let, let, me, let me put it that way. The existing record translates into 194 and just a little bit laps. Ellen aims at 198 laps, so you can count, there's still about 140, 143 laps uh, to go for her. 13 kilometers covered, she is on top of it, and it looks like she found her rhythm. Her uh, advantage slowly increases, but little by little steady, so she settles down in a cruising speed now, because, yep, we still have a few more minutes to go. Yeah, the strategy that her and Yosu have de devised is that Yosu will give her the splits, the feedback. He's, he's literally just shouting at her, like we said, because of this head position, she's facing down. She's not watching him walk the line like we traditionally see in track racing. Um, and Ellen's boyfriend, Benjamin, is blowing a whistle. So the whistle is still being used uh, every 10 minutes. So Ellen just wanted to kind of have that mental reset every 10 minutes. Um, and Benjamin is being given permission to do that. So we can assume she um, separates the hour into six times ten minutes. Probably like, okay, I'm going to have a good fast start in the first ten minutes. Then another ten minutes to find my rhythm. Another ten minutes just cruising along, holding the speed, saving some energy if possible. Um, so she probably has a plan for every ten minutes. Yeah, I think so. She talked a lot about her mental approach to this, and this is something that Ellen's worked on a lot throughout her career. Um, physically, obviously, she's extremely gifted and hardworking, um, but the, the mental approach has really changed with Ellen over the years since I've known her. 
Um, she takes her psychology very seriously. I know she's with the psychologist ahead of this to try and break it down and stay mentally uh, in the game. So um, now we talked about the temperature inside the track, 29 degrees. Roughly speaking, the warmer it is, the less air resistance, the less air density you have. So that means you can go faster, but there's a tipping point. At a certain point, it gets too hot and your body loses power because your body overheats. So we have some science um, facts. Lizzie, what do we know about that? Um, so towards the end of the hour, when the uh, physical effort starts taking its toll, we expect our internal core temperature to be up there around 41 degrees, um, which can lead to up to a 15% drop in threshold power. So it's a really fine balance between, obviously, cutting through the air but not being able to you know your threshold or your power dropping off and i think actually it's different for different athletes different athletes cope better with the heat you can train for it um and heat training is sometimes as effective as altitude training um but you need to get used to it and that is something that ellen's been doing with joseph and i believe when we saw her warming up underneath the track i think that it's because it's cooler there so she tried to get to the start as cool as possible with her body core temperature relatively low because it's heating up in here. We got people in here, the entire uh, uh, velodrome is, is heated up. So she probably, we are not going to the hiding, but she wanted to be as cool as possible when she started this yeah. event. As cool and as hydrated as possible. Obviously she can't feed or take in any nutrition during this hour record. So being perfectly hydrated and fueled before this hour record was uh, really important. It's something that she's practiced again. So every kind of aspect of the hour record has been practiced. Each individual athlete copes differently with eating and drinking at different times before an event. Um, and talking about eating and drinking, there's a few rules about the hour record. One rule, for example, is you're not allowed to have a water bottle or anything to drink or to eat with you. One hour and just you. Another rule is that the athlete, like today, Ellen, she's not allowed to have live access to information about her speed, her body temperature, her power output, or her heart rate. It's all going after feel, and the only one person allowed on the track is the coach that can give her some information. So there's a strict set of rules. That's why this event is so beautiful. It's simple. It's just about Ellen, the bike, and how much pain she can bear. Yeah, absolutely. I think that is a, a, a part that she's potentially found difficult about this hour record, that there's no live feedback. I know that she time trials often uh, with a power meter. It helps her measure her effort, but um, you kind of have to rely on the feeling of the cadence underneath you on the track bike. Um, you know, you get used to how fast your legs are turning around and it gives you that feedback of what power you're on, are you slowing down, are you speeding up. Um, but she looks, still looks very comfortable. Yes, she still looks absolutely like she's on top of it and it's really going nicely and smoothly according to the plan. I remember eight years ago when I tried uh, this at this exact same track here, I, um, because as we ta talked about it, you cannot have any information about your speed or heart rate. So I made it pretty simple. I asked myself, can I keep this speed for another hour, for another 30 minutes? And the answer is yes, I'm way too slow. <laughs> if I ask myself the same question, the answer is no, I'm too fast. If the answer to that question is yes, hopefully, maybe, then you're at the right speed. It has to be not in a red zone, not in a green zone, in the orange in between, in the dark orange. Just before you get into the red zone, you have to travel along all the time. I mean, listen, you have done many time trials. It's a special time trial, but after all, it's a little bit like a time trial, isn't it? Yeah, and that's why it takes a special kind of athlete. It is an athlete that can do this kind of diesel almost effort, this really controlled, um, high power effort. Um, I'm certainly not an athlete that could ever compete <laughs> in the hour record. I just don't have the physiology designed for it. I think if you're looking at the hour record and the perfect athlete for it, then it is Ellen. She is phenomenal at being able to hold and sustain a really high power. So now we have covered 23 minutes, 
76 laps and 19 kilometers. That's actually in the picture. That's Benjamin, her partner. He is here on the track. He's helping her, supporting her, and always on her side. And all these gentlemen we saw in the picture, they are the scientists, they do the surveillance on this, they collect all the data. Let's hear something about the science part of this hour record attempt. Really high altitude, and the higher you get in altitude, the thinner the air gets, and the faster you can go for a given power output. The temperature we can control a little bit here, and we'll try to get it hot to reduce the air density, or as hot as Ellen will, will tolerate. And then the other thing is the air pressure, and we can't really control that. Low pressure, low air density, she can go faster. When the attempt takes place, there's going to be a storm come in, and a low pressure system might come in, which could get us as much as 300 extra meters for her same power output. When we started working with her in 2018, we brought her drag down by about 15%, which is equivalent to about 40 watts of power, or a little over two kilometers of extra distance that she can go in an hour. The new Speed Concept TT bike brought that down a little bit. A lot of position coaching work on the track, equipment optimization, working with her skin suit, her helmet, every part of the bike has been touched to try to bring that, that drag number down. So now we heard all about uh, that, the aeronautics, the science behind it, and it does play an important role in this event. Yeah, it plays a huge role. I mean, there's a huge team behind this solo effort at the, at the hour. Um, and I, I think that's why it's incredible that Ellen has the courage to kind of have this huge team behind her. It's, it's undoubtedly pressure. You know, as, a, as an athlete, you try and talk yourself out of that, that pressure bubble, but it's, it's, it's hard to ignore the fact that, you know, there's this solo rider on the track, but I think around 50 staff here, every little detail is being considered. We have the science, the nutrition, the media, you know, all of it uh, behind Ellen today. And I think she is so far doing is extremely proud. So just before we go to the halftime and talk about the standings and her chances about the halftime show, we actually with this event, we have a charity partner, which is Green Hope. If you need more information, you can go to the greenhope.ch webpage. And what is Green Hope doing, Lizzie? Uh, they're providing great opportunities for children who are uh, going through cancer treatment to have experiences, days out with their family. It's a local charity. Um, Yolanda Neff, another Trek rider, is actually an ambassador for them. They do a lot of good in the local community. We're collecting here today in the stands, but also online. Um, so the information to be able to donate is below the YouTube link. Um, and also the exciting thing from Trek is that they have, uh, they've announced that they will match whatever is donated today. So it would be great if not only breaking records, but we can do some good today. So people out there, please don't just open your hearts, open your wallets as well. And Trek will match exactly whatever you donate. If it's five euros, 100 euros, 10 euros, everything helps. Trek will match everything. So we double in the end all the donations we're gonna collect. And it's a fantastic event. They do great, great, great this charity greenhope.ch if you need more information so please help us to raise a significant amount of donations for these families they struggle in life. We just saw a graphic there of the recent records broken um, and it's it's been gained quite some momentum. I think it's great that Ellen is, a, is attempting to do the hour record today, you know, only kind of six months after Joss Loudon did it. Um, it it's an event that needs athletes to kind of go with the momentum and try and break it. And it's really, I think a lot of people were excited to try and to see what Ellen Van Dyke can do. She's obviously been one of the specialists in time trialing for the last 10 years. I mean, she was world champion in 2013. Eight years later, world champion again in the Rainbows uh, time trial in Belgium last year. So she's been arguably one of the best time trialists of our generation. And it's exciting to see uh, now that she is kind of putting that, you know, making the hour record so prestigious uh, by trying to put her name to it as well.
And according to my information, she is also the current road race European champion. So she wears that wonderful white jersey with the blue stars on it as a European champion. So yes, she's not only a great person, she is actually a pretty good bike rider as well. Yeah, absolutely. She's got an incredible palmares. Um, me and Ellen actually share a European title together on the track. So I've, I've grown up with Ellen. She's a year older than me. We were both track riders starting out our careers and me and Ellen became joint European scratch race champion. There was no, no way to kind of separate us on the photo finish. Unfortunately, obviously she's a little bit taller than me, so on the podium it looked like she won the race anyway, but I think it's, it's one of the only shared title that's ever been. Obviously, I think um, I would not come anywhere close to her on this kind of event. She is an incredible specialist and would blow most of us out of the field completely. She is an incredible athlete and we are approaching the halfway mark. We are soon at 30 minutes. We got 96 laps covered, which is 24 kilometers. And soon we're gonna have uh, the 30 minutes and then we will give you a quick update on where she is and is the pain, the record. pain creeping in already? So yes, you start fast, you're so ready, you're excited. So you, you actually, you don't feel the chain, talking cycling language now. You don't feel anything for the first few laps, minutes. You feel unbeatable because you trained for more than a month for this. Exactly at this point, at half an hour, the thought crossed my mind, oh, that was the easy half, now <laughs> the same again, it's just, it's just getting harder and harder. That's where you realize it's a big challenge you actually sign up for. It's not a game, it is real and it's a big challenge. But she is still holding her speed, she's looking really good. She's 42 seconds quicker than the current record, so it's all going super smooth for Ellen. Look at the position, she is holding for 30 minutes now. These extreme aerodynamic position. She hardly moves her head up to see where she's going. She is really well prepared for this and she is just cruising down the track. Yeah, it's impressive to see her holding that position. It's, she will be in a lot of pain physically on the bike right now, but tomorrow I'm sure she'll, she'll have aches and pains from holding this completely unnatural position for an hour. She will. I remember myself, um, I couldn't walk stairs for about two days. <laughs> I had to hang and like pull myself up on the on the side rail if there were any stairs. So yes, it is super painful, but it gives you an enormous feeling of accomplishment once you have done it. Yeah, hopefully she will write her name into the record books today. It's hard to read the coach's face. He looks focused, but he wouldn't give us any height. But as we can see at the numbers, she is currently at 49.4 kilometers an hour. That's the average speed she's holding now. So right now she is a kilometer ahead of the current record. That is quite a substantial gain. Yeah, there we see her mum and dad again, uh, looking very happy, so that's a good sign. They obviously know what she's uh, aiming for. They can see Benjamin giving them feedback in the back straight. I think it's... Um, it's quite a difficult thing to support your daughter or to support your girlfriend in such an attempt. It's really hard, I think, to say the right thing in the lead up to something like this. I'm sure there'll be a huge sense of relief for everybody at the end of this event. Um, but relief is something that Ellen describes feeling after her first world title in 2013 on the, uh, in the time trial. And since then, with the experience and age and understanding um, Understanding the sport, understanding, like I said, her psychology a little bit better. She has learned to celebrate wins, to be excited. And she said after her world title in September last year that she really celebrated it. And I hope today that rather than a sense of relief, if she breaks the record, that she takes a moment to, to really celebrate and think, you know, wow, what an achievement. And it will be quite an achievement. She's an already and quite successful and accomplished bike rider with twice being world champion, European champion, and uh, now she's aiming for, yeah, one of the biggest or hardest goals there is in cycling, the hour record, the ultimate hour of truth. Yeah, that's what excites her so much about this record, the fact that it is this uh, ultimate pure event, she describes it as. Obviously, on the, on, the, on the road, in the time trial, there's so many things that can go wrong. Um, road furniture, wind, you know, bad luck, all these things. But um, 
it is about as controllable as it can be when it comes to cycling. It's just about Ellen and, like you say, her physical capability, but also her ability to, to hurt. And in training, I don't think I've ever trained with somebody who works quite as hard as Ellen and suffers quite as much as her. Um, she really puts in the work. I mean, all athletes do, but Ellen is something a little bit special. And we can see she passed the halfway point and she is still perfectly on top of it. It's a huge gear she's pushing, but she keeps her line, she keeps her position. I'm really impressed how much discipline she shows holding that position. It's got to start to hurt because, I mean, everything hurts in your body. Your, every cell of your body screams for more oxygen. You know, your feet hurt because you tied up your shoes as much as you can. So the power transition goes from your legs through your feet into the pedals. Your neck is hurting from holding that head down like that. Your elbows, your hands, everything is in a world of pain and it's just getting worse and worse. But she has 25 minutes to go and it's still looking perfectly correct. Yeah, she's really holding that line really, really well. That was something that I know she was concerned about. Obviously, that was what she focused on her paint. Uh, scheme to be it was all about holding that line because if you do you know wave away from that line it can add quite a significant distance uh, each lap so she's doing a phenomenal job of holding that black line it's it's a lot harder than it looks particularly when you're fatigued so absolutely it is absolutely and i had some smart people calculating so i think i lost something like a, uh, i don't know it was either 107 or 117 meters i lost because i moved away from the red line. Some smart people calculated that for me. Yeah, when I was a track rider, I often hit those those uh, pads just because it is just fatigue and holding the line is incredibly difficult when you're on the physical limit. Did so, you have mental strategies while you did it? Yes, I did it. But before we get to that, let's oh. watch something about the kit. We got a little video clip prepared for you about the kit and the skin suit. So let's watch this. Yeah, in the hour, every detail counts. And for sure, the, the suit you wear is super important. This is where all the wind will hit. It really determines how aerodynamic you are. So Santini, they designed a new skin suit together with the team and we went to the wind tunnel to test it and it's, it's definitely a lot faster than the one we had before. Yeah, it fits uh, perfectly, it's super tight with new materials, all I ever wish for. <laughs> yeah, I have the confidence that I wear the fastest skin suit to break the record. So obviously Ellen talks about her suit there um, and there's been so many, she shared actually a really funny photo of uh, on Instagram the other day of how her position and how the kit has changed even in the last 10 years. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, I, we can't even imagine where we'll be in the next 10 years but she's certainly on the fastest suit she could possibly be using at the moment. They're not particularly comfortable, she can't stand up in it but on the bike that, I'm sure that's the last thing she's thinking about. Close up of the coat, she looks absolutely uh, focused and it's still looking good. She is following her plan, so she is doing a fantastic job. The coach is absolutely focused, still 48 seconds at once and she's still having 49.3 kilometers an hour average. Yeah, the potentially looks like, um, you know, she might be in a, in a struggle, she might be struggling, which that's, a, you know, she will have anticipated that, she will have known when that kind of pain wall will hit. There'll be no panic, she knows how to do this, it's not something she hasn't, it's not something that's new to her. Um, it's about, like we said in the beginning, not panicking, not overanalyzing your sensations, because sensations and emotions are not useful to you in this moment. It's about sticking to the plan, to the process, and that's something that Ellen is very good at. And it does look good. She got a large margin, about a kilometer almost, ahead of the current record. Talking, uh, you asked about the strategy because before we had the video clip, I wanted it to be as simple as possible. So I did the one hour in three parts. 20 minutes, a good start, 
I choose for myself a relatively conservative time schedule, so I knew I would be faster. I kind of like tricked myself into feeling fast. So I beat my own schedule. I felt good about it for the first 20 minutes, a more aggressive start. Then 20 minutes just holding, conserving energy and keeping some for the finale. Because I remember everybody said the last five minutes, they are about to kill you. So I wanted to have something left for the last brutal minutes. And then the last 20 minutes, more or less all in. Yeah, so you made that switch at 20 minutes that it was almost a race then. Yes, because yeah. I figured if I go all in 20 minutes, I can sustain that. And then the last six, seven, eight minutes, you just go all in, red level, just give it all, knowing that it was the last event in my entire career because I retired on the same day. Yeah, well, that, that's obviously a good way to enter an event, thinking this is the last moment of pain I have or ever have to endure. Uh, but I think this, actually, this hour record for Ellen may be um, a catalyst to understand what limit she can go to. It might mean that her, you know, her threshold for power increases and it might add to her future performances. Well, and if she finishes this today and she gets the record and it is like we see in a moment about 49.3 49.4 she might just rethink it and go you know what in a year from now i try again and i want to break the 50 kilometers an hour limit which is absolutely possible yeah i wouldn't be surprised by ellen she's incredibly hard on herself and that's why i said i really hope that uh, you know at the end of this event whatever happens she's proud of the performance because you can always think I could have done more um, but you have to I think accept in the hour record that you've done you've, you've emptied the tank the, you know pacing strategy it might feel like you can push more and actually we, we spoke to the scientist before this event and she's capable of pushing more power than she actually is at the moment but not in that aerodynamic position so actually being more aerodynamic and pushing a little bit less power is faster than what it would be if she pushed as much power as she could in a less aerodynamic position. She won't, she probably won't, you know, produce the most power she ever has um, in this hour, but she'll be the fastest, which is the most important. So please, dear viewers on the screen, you can see we passed two thirds of this event. She has done 133 laps. She needs 62 more laps and she has the record. She's probably aiming at a little bit more, but 62 laps from now, 61 laps from now, and she has the record. 20 minutes to go for her. She's 51 seconds ahead of the time schedule. Or 51 seconds ahead of the current record. Is it possible that they would, uh, would change strategy in the middle of an event like this? I don't think so. It's, it's too short. It's, it's, it's brutally long, an hour. But to change strategy, I don't think really it's it's possible anymore. Now she is fully committed. She's well, not all in with her physical effort because she still need to hold back a little bit for the last minute. But she's fully committed. It's her day. It's now. Yeah, and we spoke about it. it's actually very difficult to com to communicate to an athlete in this moment now. Obviously, Yosu is doing his best and, and shouting at it, but your brain uh, struggles to kind of function properly when you're in that much pain. It's really hard not to uh, get confused, even with simple instructions. So keeping it as simple as possible and not changing strategy, I suppose, is the best uh, approach. Yeah, and um, you know, you have a battle plan and you develop it over a month or two months. The worst is you change it on the fly last minute. No. You made the plan, you thought about it, you looked at the pro and contra for the plan, stick with the plan. Yeah. Work out the plan and then you know, Ellen knows work the plan. physically what she's capable of. It doesn't matter if she's having a good day or a bad day. Um, she has to ignore those sensations and focus on what she is physically capable of. And even though she is not allowed to have access to her live data. It's all connected, collected, and we will publish a lot of it. Her average heart rate, her max heart rate, her max power, her average power. We will later on publish all that, but in a moment, people collect it, and then once this is done, we can give it all out to everyone. Um, Lissy, what do you think? How much watts is she pushing as average? How much watts? 
Uh, she needs. Well, rumours <laughs> are it's between kind of 290 and 310, which I was actually surprised about. I know that um, she's capable of pushing more than that. I think her threshold is higher than that. So it's this compromise of the aerodynamic position because uh, it makes a huge difference, your hip angle, your neck angle, how much power you can produce. But again, it's about going as fast as possible, not producing the most power. That's why, you know, the difference in size of athletes makes such a difference. Their difference in kit It's not all about who is the most powerful in, in the same way that road cycling or, is the same. And look at her still, still holding this uh, position aerodynamically, absolutely flawless. She is close to being a minute faster, 54 seconds by now. So she is really, really, really on top of it. We actually um, have another video clip with Kone Kurt. We have that prepared, but we come back to it later. In a moment, we focus on Ellen and on her hour record attempt. She's still doing 18.2 laps there, so she's bang on schedule. Um, I thought for a moment there, a couple of laps ago, that she was starting to show signs of fatigue, starting to roll a little bit, but actually she, she looks comfortable again. Um, is it possible to, to, to go through bad points and come good again in an hour, or is it just a slow deterioration? Yes, absolutely. There is uh, moments like that when you feel the pain setting in and um, I mean, literally everything hurts on your body. The place where you sit on hurts from sitting in that position. Your lower back, your glutes, your legs, your feet, your elbows, your neck, everything is basically on fire and uh, screaming, please stop, I don't want this anymore. And sometimes you can give in to that little, little devil sitting on your shoulder that goes, hey, go a little slower and it hurts less. But then you have to fight it, and probably she had a moment where she goes, oh, this is hard, I don't know, and now she's completely on top of it. She turned it around, she is going fast. Her split, her lap times are still absolutely at 18.1, 18.2 seconds, so she is really following her plan perfectly. Yeah, it's impressive that she's able to hold this position and work so hard on it, because, uh, you know, I think it was, yeah, Oh, just over a year ago that Ellen broke her pelvis and I don't think people realise just how bad that break was and how much it affected her. She had to have almost 12 weeks off the bike and, and effectively had to relearn her pedalling technique. Uh, so she pedals completely differently to how she pedaled before. She has to do a lot of rehab on her, on her back. She, has, um, she does struggle with back injuries, but again, she's incredibly dedicated. You know, if you're sharing a room with Ellen, she's up before breakfast doing yoga every morning. She's one of those athletes who really considers absolutely everything that can contribute to her performance. And it's the reason she's able to, to do all those little things that add up to the world titles that she's won and to be able to hold a position like this. And uh, please, everybody out there, watch the screen. We are at 38 kilometers an hour. Soon, she needs just 10 more kilometers. We are absolutely going to the final of this and the most brutal and most painful part of it. She has about 12 and a half minutes left. She is leading the current record by 57 seconds. So it does look good, but she has got to be in a world of pain by now. We do have a good crowd. People give her applause every time she passes uh, the Tribune. So everybody's clapping their hands and cheering her on. People want to see her succeeding today. She got a lot of support from the audience. Of course, needless to say, her family is there. They support her the most, but you can hear the people clapping their hands. And it does help. You do feel the atmosphere as an athlete and you do hear the clapping of the hands and it does encourage you. And at this part, everything helps. 10 more minutes to go or 11 minutes to go. It is brutal now. Yeah, every little helps. I mean, she, she warmed up, like we said, away from the infield. She kept herself to herself this week. Although there's a big team here, she did try and keep herself um, as kind of secluded from that as possible. But I think on race day, she did say she wanted dance music, she wanted noise, she wanted as much atmosphere as she could. It is looking fantastic for her. Maybe we can quickly come back to our charity partner greenhope.ch please people when you watch this open your hearts open your wallet 
every dollar, every euro, everything helps. And on top of that, Trek will match every donation. So we basically will double everybody's donations. So please help us to raise a little bit of money for these families. They have been hit hard by this terrible disease and they struggle in life. I'm curious if Ellen does break the record, if it encourages more athletes to try and go for it, if there's a momentum there behind uh, the hour record. There's a couple of athletes, I think, who would be similar to Ellen, potentially somebody like Lisa Brenauer, obviously an Olympic champion on the track, but also a very strong road rider. I think she would have a good shot at it. Um, and I think, you know, Ellen would welcome that. It's all about pushing that boundary. I think the, the, the real aim is to see that 50 kilometer uh, barrier broken for the women. Well, and Ellen is going fairly fast. She's in a moment, she is, uh, her target is 49.35 centimeters an hour. That's the average she's holding for the moment. And there's no signs of slowing down for her. So she very likely keep that speed until the last minute, the last seconds of this event. And yes, it's a fantastic event. We got a soundtrack. We got Ellen on a beautiful bike with a beautiful cycling kit. I'm sure a lot of women, pro athletes, watch this and go, hey, I want to be like her on center stage and I want to have my family, my friends supporting me on the track. So yes, I'm sure this could trigger a series of attempts to break the hour record and bring it over the magic 50 kilometers an hour. Nine minutes to go. She's leading by a minute. Nine minutes to go. Lizzie, how would you feel now on the last minutes of a brutal TT? I mean, you have done lots of racing. How would you feel? What, what is she telling herself now in her head? Go all in, save energy. What do you think is going through her head? Oh, if I knew what was going on in Ellen's head. <laughs> uh, I think she's, done, like I said, done so much work on her psychology that she will be absolutely in control of it. There'll be, th there'll be emotional thoughts coming in, but she'll always stick to that logic. Um, I'm not sure whether there'll be a point where she'll kind of be let off the leash, essentially, and let off the schedule and just kind of race it. I don't know when it's safe to do that in an hour record um, to avoid blowing up, but... Um, all she wants is to, to finish this hour record feeling like the tank is completely empty. Um, we start to see a little bit more rocking and rolling now, so uh, the physical effort is ta starting to take its toll, as you would expect. 167 laps covered. She tries to get 30 more laps out of this remaining eight minutes. She's leading the current record by a minute. That's a fairly good margin. Wow, so she's averaging 49.334 at the moment, so well ahead of the record. It is actually about a kilometer quicker. So that um, is about four laps. Easy translation. Could she's she make the 50 or is it too late? Uh, I think she would be now she would need to be at 49.7 or 8 to, to make up that. Yep. But she is, the way it looks like, um, she is gonna break the record by quite the margin. Before it was 150 meters, 200 meters, 400 meters quicker. She is almost putting another kilometer into it. So I believe, yes, she is gonna have the record. And I also believe she's gonna go after the pain goes away, she's going to, hey, I think I have the 50 in me. <laughs> I'm going to go again. Yeah, absolutely. What a performance. I mean, it's still incredible. She's holding that line. She's not deviated off it. No, none of those pads have been moved. She must be in a world of pain now. And have we ever seen her moving her head out of line? I don't think so. Not even for a split second. Her head is down, she can only watch, look at the position right now. She maybe see, can watch 10 meters ahead of her, or what is that, uh, uh, 30 feet or whatever, 10 feet ahead of her. Uh, it's absolutely impressive how 
discipline. She's holding this position. She's gonna be in excruciating pain right now everywhere in her body. Maybe she gets off the bike and goes, oh, I'm never gonna do that again. <laughs> we see. Yeah, just to literally have that tunnel vision for an hour takes incredible discipline. Not to look up and try and get some feedback from somewhere um, is, is phenomenal. It looks like Benjamin, uh, her boyfriend there, has taken over from the coach and the shouting. So we're kind of, I think, more into that emotional part of the ride now where it is about just emptying the tank, less about strategy. Yes, it's six and a half minutes left. So she is probably now going to go all in into the red zone and just squeezing every bit of power out of her body, still holding that position. And look at the beautiful bike. We got three of them here on the track one on each side of the track in case there's a puncture or some mechanical problems we got two more bikes here with her coach or with her partner her boyfriend uh, in charge of them 20 more laps to go she's trying to go for 20 more laps or 19 more laps from now 44 and a half kilometers still holding 49.3 kilometers an hour average this looks fairly safe she got it can she see a lap board or a clock at this point in time i don't think so so let's hear what uh, cone the court has to say the team support manager let's listen to him for a moment Kuhn, you did an amazing job what we learned today for this our record that that can happen today how do you feel now I think we, we, she's doing a really good job. I mean, she she's strong. She's really she's really nailing this. You know, she she's on a good pace. I think she was hurting for a little bit, but uh, now when the end is inside, she knows it. I think she can still accelerate a little bit, and she's going to really get a great time. And we're we're very proud. It's a long process for all of us, but this is great. We learned it was a dream from Ellen. Was it also the dream of the whole team? Yes, absolutely. I mean, we were really, with the whole team, working really hard for this. We've really done, uh, I think, a, a team work here with, you know, from everywhere, between all the sponsors, with, with all the staff from the team. I think everybody did their utmost for this, uh, for this event to really make, make Ellen's uh, dream a reality. And uh, it looks like she's going to achieve that dream. Congratulations and thank you so much for this amazing teamwork. So that's what the team support manager had to say. And of course, it's a dream for the entire team. And of course, she deserves, after all the hard work, to break that record. We got four minutes to go. She must know she has it now. Imagine the emotions in her head. Yes, so much pain, but she knows she's on top of it. She knows. She's gonna break the record. She's gonna be immensely proud. What do you think, Lizzie? I'm just hugely impressed that she's managing to maintain this position whilst physically being on her absolute limit. I expected that she, we might see a little bit more rocking and rolling from Ellen, but she's clearly worked extremely hard on being able to maintain this position. We just saw her look up there for the first time. Um, I'm sure her neck is cramping. I'm sure every muscle in her back is screaming at her to stand up. Um, but she can't, she has to commit this last four minutes. And she's still a minute ahead, so it does look very, very good. Remember, at 194, she breaks the record. Every mid meter, every lap more, brings her the record. Yeah, every meter counts. And the picture now, the UCI Commissaire, um, according to the rules, there's uh, three of them, I think, they have to be there, and they did measure the track. It's an officially UCI classified track, but before an hour record attempt, they do measure the black line. That's where the athlete has to go, and you try to go as close as you can to the black line at the bottom, and they measure the split times, the laps, there's two of them out there, so everything is officially controlled by the UCI. Here we go, we hear the dance music in the background. This is what Ellen's asked for in the final meters of her attempt. She wants to be as pumped as possible. She wants to let the emotions take over, forget about the logic, forget about strategy, and just push herself to the absolute limit. It's safe to do so now. She's not gonna blow up. It's all about making the most of those final laps. Just about two minutes and a little bit left. She is gonna make it. She looks fantastic. 
and it's just Lizzie, we witness history in the making here. <laughs> How do you feel about it? I'm all excited. I've Absolutely. got goosebumps. Yeah, I'm so excited for it. You deserve this so much. Oh, you know, in cycling, we don't get to break world records. This is the only event where you can say you are the world record holder. Um, obviously, she's got so many other results and on her palmares to be proud of. But to say you are the fastest in the world at something um, is incredibly is an incredible achievement. And it's going to be quite a benchmark. Far more than 49 kilometers an hour, 49.2 at the moment. So it's quite a benchmark. Maybe it doesn't intimidate other riders to try because this is an outstanding performance we see here. Yeah, absolutely. She's blown the record apart. She's done a phenomenal ride. Uh, we all hoped and expected that she would, but to deliver is a different thing. Um, and to deliver in such a pressure environment is, is really a phenomenal performance. Um, and like I say, she really deserves this. So look at the top of the screen in the middle. 48.2 kilometers she covered. 194 left. She is having a record now. The record is 48.4. She yes. already covered 48.5. How much faster can she go? Oh, she's really just going to push those pedals as hard as she can and, like we said, make every meter count. Look at that. She does break the record. Look at the excitement. Yay. Her parents yeah. are going to be off their heads, excited <laughs> and so proud of, her, of their child breaking the record, writing her name into the books of history of cycling. She's instilled to this moment, she's kept her head down, she's focused, she's powering on through. It's really incredible to see. Every little meter counts now. Come on, Ellen. Smash it. <laughs> Here we go, three more seconds, ten more seconds. She got the record by quite an advance. Wow. Incredible. Last lap, the hour is done. There is the result, 49.254 kilometers. She covered in an hour. What a performance. We are so proud of her. She did well. What a happy, what a fairy tale actually yeah, it is. amazing. It's like she dead and sit up, bless her. <laughs> that moment there where you can slow down. It's, uh, you're dying to be on a road bike and pull the brakes and three wheel, but... Uh, those pedals pull you around and you're in agony. Phenomenal result. Well done, Ellen. And look at her. She is hardly able to smile. She gives us a quick wave and a little smile. But I think her body is just busy absorbing the pain she is in. So she will take a lap or two, give us another wave when she passes uh, the Tribune just in front of us. She is the new world, our record holder at more than 49 kilometers an hour. Now she's giving us a little smile. What a relief it must be for her. Yeah, she gets out the saddle, something I'm sure she's been dying to do for the last hour. She must be cramping all over. The, physical, the physicality of holding a position, any position, for an hour um, is, is phenomenal. But to do it, producing the power that she was doing is incredible. It is incredible to watch. And I'm so happy for her that after all the hard work, it actually her dream came true. Yeah, it paid off. Yeah, she waves to the crowd there. She's enjoying the moment. I can see that she's delighted. She's absolutely desperate for a drink, I'm sure. Um, a phenomenal performance. So happy for her. There we are. We see her boyfriend there, Benjamin, slowing her down. It's been a real team effort. There's not much, <laughs> not much moment uh, for respite there. It's straight into, uh, into the celebration with everybody. Obviously, there's a huge crowd around her, incredibly proud of her. <laughs> oh, we see her there, yeah, again with Benjamin. He's an incredible support, always, um, always at the races when he can be. Um, and it's, like we said before, it's a difficult thing to support an athlete in the dream and a brave thing uh, for Ellen to do, to chase that dream. You know, there's no guarantee of success. You have to face the fact that you might fail and, and tackle it head on. And she's proved what an incredible physical performance she's capable of, but also mental to hold it together, to perform under the pressure that she has. Um, and yeah, to, to do us all really proud. 
She deserves this. You can see the physical effort there that she's had to do. She's exhausted. Um, I think we'll hear from her in a few minutes. Potentially we'll hear from Kundakort again uh, just to see his analysis of, of what he thinks of the record. Hopefully we've had viewers tune in from around the world um, and who've seen what she's capable of, seen what she's uh, produced today. Like we say, you know, the, the record has been broken uh, by a considerable amount. I think Ellen will be happy with that result. She obviously wanted to break the record, but I know Ellen wants more always. So um, I'm impressed, obviously, that she broke it. But I think the, the real uh, performance was the fact that she, she broke it by quite a considerable amount and it is a new benchmark. So, yeah, hopefully we see more women attempt it and, and the hour record kind of remain as prestigious as it is. I think we can see Jens down there now on the track. He's going to have a word with Ellen and see how she's feeling uh, post-race. I'll hand over to Jens now on track side with Ellen. So we're here with Ellen. You just set the new world hour record. Of course, you're going to be in a world of pain, but you're going to be so happy. Take us a little bit through. How did you feel at the start? How did you feel towards the end? Give us a little rundown of the entire event. Yeah, well, when I started, I saw a black line and I saw that for 190 something laps, I think. Um, I don't know, at the beginning uh, I was a bit nervous, but I was good under control. I think we, I did exactly what we wanted to do. and. Um, if I would feel great, I wanted to accelerate in the second part, but <laughs> instead of that, I uh, slowed down a little bit. Um, yeah, and then the time started to tick down really, really slow, <laughs> I have to say. Um, at 45 minutes, I thought, okay, I, I need to accelerate, but I thought I was accelerating, but I think I was only <laughs> slowing down, so that, mean, uh, that meant uh, this was it for today, and I'm, uh, I'm very happy uh, I broke the record. When did you feel you have it? Halfway through, only five minutes. So when did you feel, I think I have it, I think I'm going to make it? So I knew the first half an hour I was around laps 18.1, 18.2, I think. And I knew that was well under the pace I needed to ride. So I thought if I don't slow down too much, if I don't go over five, then I should have it. And I think I was almost never over five, maybe sometimes. I couldn't hear everything, but uh, I, everything became a little bit blurry. And especially at the end, I was not so straight anymore. But uh, I was just so happy when I heard it was, uh, it was over. <laughs> so now there's a huge team around you, everybody is so happy. Any words for the team? Um, anything you want to share with the team around you? This whole project has been so amazing for me. Just the whole build up, it was such a great experience and I couldn't wish for any more support of Trek. It was really, really the best I ever had. Um, yeah. Um, I also have thought about the whole team during the ride. I thought everybody put so much time and effort into this. I need to, I need to give them, uh, I need to give them all for for all their work and all their time and and everything they they put into it. And uh, yeah, in the end, uh, all I can say is uh, ride bikes, have fun, feel good, huh? <laughs> Ellen, congratulations again. Thanks for the interview. You get, we leave you to get ready for the ceremony, and congrats again from all of us. Thank you. Yeah, brilliant to see Ellen so happy there, uh, so proud of her performance. She did a phenomenal uh, physical performance, like we say, mental performance. And um, 
you know, she's clearly uh, very grateful the support that she's received. Um, but I think really the, the, the real champion of today is obviously Ellen. There's only one person who can pedal that bike round close to 50 kilometers in an hour. And there's only a handful of athletes in the world who are capable of getting anywhere close to it. And she is the best of the best. Well done, Ellen. So that was a nice interview of Ellen. She was so happy as we all could see proud and happy. She's getting ready for the ceremony. She's going to get a certificate or a trophy that she's the official world record holder. Yeah, but she she has the bragging rights to say she is the fastest woman in the world over an hour. Incredible. And it looks like she's almost not believing it yet. Yeah, I'm sure it's, it, it takes a lot to process. It's probably a little bit overwhelming to go from that kind of overwhelming fatigue, pain, that tunnel vision, just being by completely focused on yourself and your own um, emotions to suddenly welcoming in a, a world around you. She's going to be quite giving a lot of interviews in the next uh, days or weeks to come, I believe, with that fantastic performance we saw today. She's back smiling, so I think the first initial pain has gone, so she is now she hopefully looks, able to enjoy. She looks remarkably fresh to me, yeah. Um, no, I hope, like I say, I hope she she's able to enjoy it over the next coming weeks. Um, but, you know, athletes have always got something else around the corner. She'll be back on road duty soon enough. And, um, you know, who knows what kind of influence this hour record will have on her confidence going into the rest of the road season, but also her time trialing ability. Yes, because we do have a world championship time trial somewhat later in the season coming up. So, yes, that might be a future goal for her. But... Let's go back and enjoy the moment together with Ellen. Have a close look at this fantastic skin suit she is wearing. Santini did it well. Check the shoe covers. For the tech geeks out there, she didn't use any oil on the chain. There's a certain wax she used to keep the chain smooth and reduce friction and so saving a few more watts here and there. They really tried to dial it to perfection every little part of this hour record attempt. We see her being presented shortly with with the certificate, with the poster of her uh, distance there. Isn't that fantastic? Look at that. That is the benchmark. It is a serious top performance we saw today. She put 900 meters into the old record so now she is the fastest woman on earth on a bike how fantastic is that title yeah impressive i wonder where it ranks for her personally you know in her palmares like you say european world champion now world record holder well you're her roommate often when she tells you you send me a quick message to let me know because i'm curious <laughs> as well to know where she goes. It's got to be at the top three of her uh, palmares, of her uh, list of uh, success. Look at the pure happiness of her. Yeah, it's great to see. Uh, she, she really deserves this moment. She's worked incredibly hard for it. And I think knowing Ellen, though, there, there will be a push for more. I, I don't expect her to, to be happy with this record too long. She should be, but um, we'll see. There's plenty more goals in for the rest of the season, but for now, she should really make the most of this one. Oh, look at that. Somebody came well prepared. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. No expense spared there. <laughs> it's okay. Great. That's the official uh, from the UCI in charge of this whole event and um, chief commissaire. So now okay. <laughs> congratulating Ellen for the record and passing okay. her that wonderful watch. I guess we had Switzerland, so it's going to be a Swiss watch and some flowers, of course. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
there. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching us. Maybe I'm allowed to say one more time, greenhope.ch. You still can do some donations. Trek will match every single donation. It is for families struggling with children and cancer. So try to give them a little bit of relief in a hard life. So greenhope.ch, you find more information there. That's our charity partner. Yeah, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Um, it's a privilege that we've been able to watch history be made again by Ellen Van Dyke today. <laughs>